All right guys, so we had some questions about high compression engines on pump fuel. So I thought I'd do a short video and break down the fundamentals at play here, chamber design, uh, Ron versus Mon, um, fuel burn characteristics, different type stuff, just to give you a better idea of what's going on. Uh, I wanna thank the sponsors of this video, it's Einstein Motors, and uh, let's get into it. All right, so the first thing we need to understand is burn speed and timing before top dead center. So I'm just gonna use a small block Chevy as the example here. 32 to 35 degrees before top dead center is when we're turning that plug on. And we have what we call a burn speed duration. It's anywhere from 40 to 50 degrees before it actually hits that piston. So this piston's actually coming up the ball. We're turning the plug on at around 34 35, 32, 32 to 35 degrees. And most small blocks end up around on pump fuel. If, if the comp and cam and everything's right, 34 seems to be my number, 35 maybe. Uh, again, it really depends what cylinder head and so on, but we'll just use round numbers, say 34 degrees. So from there, we have to deliver the timing. So the pressure front, we wanna hit the piston at 10 to 15 degrees after. TDC. So as you can see, there's a big duration from 34 degrees, say we'll make it 35 to 10 and make the math easy. That's 45 degrees of burn speed, burn timing. So this is where we've got to look at one, the fuel characteristics, the chamber characteristics with different chambers have different flame front speeds. And the general rule is the better the chamber as far as burn speed goes. So something like an LS, which is a far faster burn speed, it's got a, a more central uh, spark plug position. The faster we can burn it, one, the more thermal efficient it becomes, but the more stable it becomes at high compression ratios. So this is where you'll see the 12 and a half, 13 to one comp on factory engines. But we also got to look at dynamic comp and camshaft. So um, I think Einstein Motors has a series coming out on that. So maybe join up and check it out. But all those things play into this uh, uh, fuel type and so on. But where you can see it play out really, really well is if we do have, say, a small block Chevy at 12 to one and, and or 13 to one, and we've got it on the dyno on pump fuel, but we can only get to say 30 degrees. And if we take the equivalent burn speed fuel, of course, they're not all exactly the same, but if we compare a gasoline to a gasoline, like a 104 or some race fuel that has an almost identical burn speed as gasoline, say 98, and then we get it on the dyno and we're able to put two, three or four degrees more timing in, it makes a lot more horsepower. We, we've actually re showed the limitations of that 98 fuel because we weren't actually able to get to optimal timing. So we would have been hitting the piston maybe 17, 18 degrees after bottom dead center, uh, top dead center, sorry. Now this can create issues long-term, but again, most of the guys are only driving to the track and then changing fuel, so you can get away with it. And the reason why uh, it can create a few issues is because we're slowing the burn speed down. Remember, the burn speed isn't a linear event. So what actually happens here, when we ignite the spark plug, say 34 degrees before top dead center, it's actually kindling slowly. And we have two competing forces. We have the rising pressure of the piston, then we have the rising pressure of the flame front starting to spread out. And these two basically create a positive feedback loop and accelerate the burn speed. Then we also have squish mechanisms that will accelerate it even more. So it's not a linear uh, curve as much. And this is why so many characteristics will affect that. So chamber design, uh, piston design, uh, every plug position, everything. So if the plug's right over the side, then the flame front travel is much further, where if we move it up into the middle like a twin cam, it's now half the distance from bore to bore. And then bore size also affects flame front speed. So there's a lot of factors that come into it. And um, I'll break some more down as we go. So 
So this leads us into quench, probably one of the most important aspects, especially in the uh, two valve era um, and two valve engines in general, and, and especially in motorsport. So any of the guys playing with um, two valve engines, your normal 40 thou sort of goes out the window. We're trying to get the piston as close as we can. And the really, really good engine builders will see a, a part number almost etched into the cylinder head. They'll get them that that well done. And we're, we're starting to see this in uh, modern OEM engines now. Uh, a lot of the twin cam stuff are in the 20s as far as head gasket thickness goes now because it's all about thermal efficiency. The, and thermal efficiency uh, leads into emissions and so on. How much energy we can transfer to the wheels. Most engines aren't thermal efficient at all, 25 to 35%. Uh, some of the new Toyotas are starting to crack, uh, I think around 40, 41% now, which is huge improvements. But quench is the factor that will improve burn speed. So the, the longer the burn time is, the more heat we put in the engine. So we want to shorten it up anyway. This is why, you know, the, the LS head was much better moving that plug over. But as we improve the quench, we improve burn speed. So these create little jets that shoot in and depending on the distance of the quench, so how close we can get it to the head will also dictate how fast it accelerates out of there and how well it mixes and fires. And we need less and less timing with more quench, but there's obviously limits. So how well the chamber is designed. So these early wedges, they had a horrible tra transition under the foot there. So it could conglomerate fuel particles there. These fuel particles could ignite under that uh, quench mechanism. So, you know, Carvey versus EFI, that also changes things. How well the fuel is homogenized before it goes into the cylinder. We see this with injector positions. This is why uh, DFI, so direct fuel injection, will do better than port injection because port injection really doesn't have the time to shear the fuel. And as we move the injector away, we make more and more horsepower. So there's a lot of aspects. So now let's talk about actual things that will change our burn speed because it's not just quench, it's fuel types, it's everything. So I've done a little list here. So burn speed characteristics and factors, fuel mixture, that's another thing that'll come into it is how rich the mixture is. As we richen our fuel mixture up, we tend to accelerate the burn speed because the fuel molecules are more available to a certain point. And then we start to degregate that speed because it's too rich and then the burn speed gets slower. So if you ever see a burn speed chart to fuel mixture, it tends to peak at about that 13, 12, 8, somewhere around there. Again, depending on the fuel type. Other aspects we have and we've covered now is chamber and piston design. So this is what we're seeing in modern engines now is chamber and piston design. So Toyota tested, I think this back in the 2000s, probably 2010, they actually started playing with rake on their uh, quench pads. So what they actually found was rather than shooting the two quench streams across from each other, they'd actually angle them up at the plug at about five degrees. Uh, this would force the uh, high pressure quench jets up around the plug and create better homogenized mix at the plug and better burn speed, better emissions, better better horsepower, better everything. So that's another aspect that comes into this quench and, and burn speed. Uh, quench area, which we covered, uh, piston speed and rod ratio. Rod ratio is another big one, especially with octane, and this is something I found out the hard way many, many years ago, with longer rods in small block Chevys, six inch rods in even just 350 strokes, they were more knock sensitive than say a, a 5.7 rod. And that's due to speed at TDC. So uh, a faster rod at TDC. So your little Windsors tend to snap off the cylinder head better. They like more comp and they tend to make uh, more power, but obviously there's an RPM limit and that's where longer rods are better at higher RPM. And we see this in Formula One and, and stuff like that. But reaction wise, so an engine that you want super quick in drag racing, you really don't want to sort of go over that 1.7 to one because you want them snappy. You want them to handle a little bit more comp. So uh, 
1.9 to 1 won't handle as much compression and be more knock sensitive. That's because we have more piston dwell. The piston's hanging around at TDC longer and the, the fuel just wants to go, it wants to fire. Uh, so the pressure tends to increase um, much faster in that sort of setup. So, uh, and tumble and swirl. Uh, these two obviously are a big factor. Uh, tumble, and this is in the chamber, not in the port. The port will start the um, swirl or tumble, but the chamber is what's dictating that mechanism. And um, yeah, now what we're seeing with a lot of the twin cams is a hyper tumble. So they don't have a short turn anymore. Some have even got a little kick lip and what it helps does is create this hyper tumble in the cylinder and that helps scavenging mechanism on overlap and so on. So, um, and, and the other thing obviously is Ron versus Mon. So um, I'm sure you've heard of it. Octane number of your fuel is based on your Ron plus your Mon divided by two. But again, the Mon number, so the motor octane number is influenced by all the factors we talked about, the combustion chamber design. And this is why we're able to see OEM engines even at you know, 13 and a half, 14 to one Mazda Sky Active with really good uh, scavenging exhaust designs and stuff like that. And good mechanisms with cam timing and everything like that. And that leads into our dynamic element. What's our dynamic compression and camshaft LSA all affects that mechanism as far as what it's gonna be. So uh, I think Einstein will cover that in their uh, dynamic compression videos. But anyway, hopefully that helps guys. Cheers.